Hello everybody, uh, what we're going to have a go at uh, today is a bluebell woodland scene. Uh, so the first thing that I have done is having chosen the view that I'm going to do, lightly sketch the whole thing out using a 2B pencil. Just the basic outline of the main trunks and main branches of the trees. Absolutely no point in going into fine detail and putting any of the fine branches in because we'll add those later. No point in putting any of the light coloured foliage in and no point in drawing any of the bluebells themselves out. So that's stage one, very light pencil work to get the main trunks and main branches of the trees. And the first thing I did was to lightly sketch the position of the horizon line onto my drawing, place the trees on top, and then I can rub that line out afterwards. But that gives me this sort of, it's below halfway, so I've got sort of just below halfway for the bluebells, and then I'm going to have much more for the trees and the foliage. But get that horizon line in first, um, because obviously I've sketched up from an A4 photograph, so I need to get it to the right proportion on the page. Um, and that's stage one. What I'm going to suggest that you do before you start painting is to mix a palette of colours on a test piece of paper um, for the bluebells. The bluebells will come in a little bit later, but if we work out the colours first, that's going to be my suggestion. Uh, I'm going to start off with the standard colours that most of you will have in a watercolour box. And I'm going to do mixed sort of bluey mauves. You might have some violets already in your box, but this is if you have none of that and you're going to work from scratch. So most of you will have something like a cobalt blue. Um, and I'm going to suggest that you put a cobalt blue with a little bit of alizarin crimson. And that will give you uh, a nice pale mauve. Now, if you up the amount of uh, the alizarin crimson that you put in, then your colour is going to go more pinky. Um, but, and going the other way, if you add a little bit more of the cobalt in, you'll get uh, a deeper blue tone. And obviously there may be areas where you want the colour to be paler, so just add more water. So that gives you quite a range just using cobalt blue and um, alizarin crimson. You can repeat that same use of blue, cobalt blue, but this time instead of alizarin crimson, and if you haven't got alizarin crimson but you've got something like rose madder, that would be very similar, but if you want a slightly lighter combination and you've got permanent rose, then try cobalt blue with a little bit of permanent rose in with it. Um, so I'll just mix that together. Same blue, permanent rose, and you might get a slightly brighter combination if I add a little bit more of the permanent rose. When it's dry you should get, so it looks very similar on the page, but when it's dry you'll get a slight difference in the um, in the combination. So again if I add more blue to it and water down. Don't forget some of your colours are going to be granulating and as you can see the granulation gives you a rather nice split in the colour. So if you use something like um, another colour that you'll have in your box might be cerulean blue, you'll get a similar effect with cerulean blue uh, where the blue splits again for you. So if I try the same combination, cerulean blue with a little touch of um, the alizarin crimson, that's going to give me a much duller, to be honest, much more muted combination. So, cerulean with alizarin crimson. Uh, but then if I use that combination with a little bit of the permanent rose, I'll try that again. And that's with permanent rose. And if I put a little bit more of the blue in, so it's slightly less pink. Um, so we get a different combination again. Um, you will may have ultramarine. Again, ultramarine being a deeper blue will give you quite a strong uh, combination, um, but quite a dull, dark blue tone. Uh, if you have something like a Windsor blue, um, we can try that, that as well. So Windsor blue, which is a more brilliant blue, 
Windsor blue or perhaps even Prussian blue if I use that with a little bit of the uh, Windsor blue with alizarin crimson. If I up the amount of alizarin crimson, I'll go much more, almost like a maroony tone. But if I go with a brighter pink, this is Windsor blue, red shade in fact, and if I use that with the permanent rose, and a bit more, increase the amount of permanent rose if you want it to be more pink. And again, don't forget, I've done fairly strong mixes. If I water it away, then I'm going to get much softer colours. So the greater the range of blues that you try out, uh, you might have more unusual blues um, like Indanthridine, uh, you might have manganese blue, which is very similar to cerulean blue. Uh, so you could try manganese blue, you might have intense blue, uh, but try all your different blues in combination with whatever pinks that you have. So you may have something like quinacridone magenta. Um, if I show you some little test pieces that I did, remember to make a note of what you've done so that you can see and refer back to. So some of them are very similar, some of them have got uh, granulation which you can see coming out, some of them don't, um, but it gives you uh, a, uh, a nice little range. And again, another sheet I've done here, I've used, so, tried out some of the colours that are already in my box, so I've got a Windsor Violet. Another blue that you might have got a few years ago, a special edition blue called Smalt Blue came out. So I've tried that with permanent rose and got quite an attractive colour. So test all these things out first. If you can, write down what they're called so that you can then refer back to them. So we're ready to start the painting now. I've mixed colours in advance um, to work with because we're going to start with the palest washes to begin with. So I've done a very, very watered down colour for the sky. There's bits of sky showing through. Now, in my photograph, it looks almost white, but I've decided to do it a really diluted blue. But we are going to have to be a little bit careful because obviously blue and yellow for some of the lightest foliage is going to make green so i've got to be really careful so i've got a pale yellow mixed up i've got a very light acidic green mixed up for some of the foliage and then i've got this strange the sludgy color which is a combination of uh, sort of a cerulean blue and a raw sienna which gives me um, some of the sort of softer greens that are right at the back of the scene so I'm going to concentrate on the top half of the painting first. I'm not worrying about this section, I'm worrying about the top section first and I'm going to be using uh, my size 12 pointed brush and this is going to be wet in wet. Okay? I can paint right over the top of the trunks and branches because they're all darker so I don't have to avoid them. I just obviously have to uh, go with the lightest colours first. So it's a toss up whether to put some of the sky areas in first or to get some of the golden foliage in but I am actually going to go with the sky to begin with uh, so I'm loading my brush and looking to see where I want patches of blue sky to come in avoiding the yellow and picking up extra water so that I can soften some of the edges in as I go so I'm not left with too harsh lines but this is just a loose I've not wet the paper, because if I wet the paper, the colour is going to run way too far. So I'm just doing small patches of blue where I want a bit of sky colour to come through. Um, so I'm going to move around the picture, softening edges with water. If it goes too far, just use a bit of kitchen paper and blot it away doesn't really matter these are only little speckles of sky coming through continuing on over this side a little bit of blue and again just picking up extra, extra water and softening it round so that my blue is really pale I don't want a big fierce blue it's just I actually used a Windsor blue red shade um, just to introduce a little hint of sky so now I can move on to the uh, golden foliage colour. So this is my yellow. I've actually used gamboge. And again, just picking up with the brush. I'm sticking with my size 12 
and moving that around. Picking up some extra water. Bear in mind this is going to dry a lot lighter so what looks quite strong on your page initially is not going to end up being that strong by the time it's dried down. So. And what I don't want to do is to lose all of the uh, colour of the paper behind. So areas of white paper are fine. We're working from light to dark, so bear in mind that this will look very acidic initially, but deeper greens are going to be sitting on top of this. And again, I can just get a little bit of water here and there and soften some of the edges, but not everywhere, because I do want some hard edges to form. And I'm following a photograph, but don't be slavish to the picture. I'll move across and put in some on this right hand side of the painting. I just want the feeling of the sunlight filtering through. So I keep stopping to load my brush with more colour and then pick up some water. And then move on to the next colour. And I don't have to wait for that one to dry. I do want a bit of wet and wet happening. So this is my my slightly acidic green um, that I'm going to drop in. Not everywhere, but just begin to introduce. I have got my paper at a slight angle, so you can prop it up with um, something like a piece of kitchen roll, just to give you a little bit of an angle. I'm beginning to drop in some of those greens through the middle. This is all just wash at the moment, no detail going in at all. And as the colour accumulates at the bottom here, just wipe off the excess on kitchen paper and when the colour travels, don't panic, just use kitchen paper and your large brush to mop up the excess colour. In fact, what I'm going to do is just run a little line of water along that edge because I don't want it to be too harsh. It doesn't matter if you get a cauliflower. Just let the colour run down so it's not too harsh and I'll do a similar thing over this side, just a little bit of water. Then I've got that strange sort of murky green to put in. Uh, which will give, it's got more blue in it, it's that cerulean or manganese blue and that will just push the back of the woodland away. Again I'm going to pick up some water so that I'm varying the tone across that towards the back. I can run it through the trunk, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to introduce a little bit over on this side as well. anywhere else. So I think I have a little bit over here too. Bits of that can come through the other colour. And again, just clean your brush off, make sure you take all the excess water off and then you can use that to just mop up where you don't want the colour to be. Any areas that I might have missed out, I think I'll go back in here with a little bit more of the yellow and drop some of that softer green into that while it's wet. So these are just the initial stages of the wash. The next section to tackle is this lower section down here. So uh, we're going to use some of the lightest of the uh, bluebell colours that were mixed and begin to introduce also in between that um, the lightest greens. Still sticking with mostly my size 12 wash brush and then also I will use uh, this one in places possibly and that's uh, about a size uh, 6 or 7. So the palest of my uh, mauves and I'm going to start at the back. This top section now I'm hoping has dried. Paper's warped a little bit but that's okay, it will flatten out. 
So this is quite a soft mix of my sort of cerulean blue or manganese blue with a little hint of permanent rose in it. And I can wash that in to this back section. I can go over the tree, it doesn't really matter. I'm sort of coming into it a little bit. And I want to leave some blank bits of paper where I want the greens. If I take the blue right over the top, the greens are going to go a bit too dark. So I am leaving some sections where the uh, of white paper, but that will be for, for greens later. And I am going to pick up some just clean water and flood some of that down so that the colour's not the same strength all the way across. Obviously the bluebells do go into shadows so that some of those colours will be stronger later but I'm just going to, in this lower section, just splash around a little bit of the pale colour here and there which will be for some of these closer bluebells. Some of these are going to get covered by green but if they're down there and some of the bluebells will need to be a lot stronger as well but just having a little hint of that pale, pale wash I think will work quite nicely. It's almost better to put in more than you're going to need, knowing that I'm going to lose some later on. Now, while the top section is still uh, wet, I've got a slightly stronger, slightly different mix of blue, and I'm just going to drop that in. This is a combination with a bit of Windsor, Windsor blue. Uh, you could use Prussian blue or intense blue. And again, a little bit of the uh, permanent rose. So I'm just going to drop bits of that in at this stage. So there's a bit of a, a difference. It's not all one tone. And actually, I've also got some of the Windsor Blue just on its own. And I'm going to drop some of that in as well to get little hints of brighter, lighter blue. If your colour sort of accumulates in blobs at the bottom and you don't want them, then again, just use a dry brush, not a wet brush, and you can mop some of those up if that bothers you, but most of this is gonna get covered um, eventually anyway, so I'm not too worried. Uh, what I'll do is I will uh, leave that, I think, to dry, and then mix some stronger stronger blues um, but before I do that I will get rid of the yellow but if uh, of the white paper with my yellows and light greens but if I do that now while it's all wet it's going to run a little bit too much so I need to be a bit patient and give it a moment or two to dry. Now that my uh, bottom section has dried I need to go start going in between and those white areas and start dropping some of the greens in. Still sticking with these two brushes my size 12 and my size uh, 6 um, and I'm going to begin at the back and work my way forward. Now, uh, my view, the greens at the back are slightly darker, so I'm just going to start to introduce a little bit of um, the deeper greens, just loosely with the brush. Keep loading the brush up. Again, I'm running over the trunks, doesn't matter because they're gonna come in afterwards. Just doing a nice sort of loose line. I can then pick up a bit of water, and move it round with water. Still no detail in at this stage because this is all the underlying washes, some of which we're going to have to come back and strengthen at a later point. So I'm just trying to follow a kind of an uneven pattern. I can at this stage even begin to go over the top of some of my areas of blue where the ground sort of meanders in between. So if I use the point of the brush, I can come down and just sort of introduce some of this stronger green part of the forest that I'm doing at the moment was all in the shade so I'm dealing with the darker greens at the back purely because I don't want to run my hand through the wet paint so we're going from the back coming forward and this way unless you have a particular reason for needing any white paper to come through by the end of 
these set of washes I won't really have um, white paper on show. So coming forward, there's some greenery around the base of this trunk. Again, I'm not going into, I'll go back and do sort of finer detail. This is the more general areas at this stage. And as I come forward, so the greens start to lighten. So I've I've added more yellow. In fact, the yellow I'm using is gamboge, and I've started to add more gamboge into that green. So I get to the stage I think where the small brush is inhibiting. So I'm going to move up to my larger brush. Stops me mucking around with fussing about with small marks. I have got large puddles of colour mixed. Don't be too mean about this, you've got quite a lot of area to, to cover. So mix substantial washes, you will use it up and test your colours before you start to make sure that you've mixed uh, a strength of colour. I've got quite a lot of pigment in this. So I'm coming over to the right hand side of the painting, loading my brush up. Now before I get too carried away over here, there are some small areas towards the back, which are the darker greens. I just want to begin to introduce little hints of and through at the back. I deliberately left some areas of white paper. I'm gonna drop light and dark into those at the same time. And you'll get a natural overlap of color. So you will get some darker bits. If I break up, the top edge. It doesn't look too sort of stiff. Go back behind the trunk of what will be the trunk of the tree. And I can come down with my smaller brush again and introduce the darker greens coming in between some of my mauves that I put down. That's why it was a good idea to have more mauve than you thought because you will lose mauve in this process. But I want to break up the edge so that I've not got too stiff an edge. Bear in mind that your green if you're dropping one green into another it's that rule where your colours need to be mixed a bit stronger, a bit thicker, combinations a bit thicker otherwise you'll get cauliflowers everywhere. Moving down to my bigger brush again and just getting some wash down here. I am going to leave some bits of white paper because I do want to drop in little elements of uh, bluebells so I'm, my intention is not to cover all of this with wash. That look a little bit uh, speckly to start with because I am going to leave bits of white. Keep stopping to load your brush up with more colour. I'm going to pick up some lighter yellows down here and have some, well they're not strictly yellows but they've got a lot more yellow in the green and have it paler towards the front. of colour that are accumulating, wipe the excess off on the tissue and then just use your dry brush to mop up. But some of them are quite nice to leave and then you'll get little darker bits so don't think you've got to mop it all away. And that's the end of that section. As you can see, what I have started to do now is uh, several things at the same time. 
I've begun to introduce the lightest colour on the trunks of the trees. So this is a combination of um, a Van Dyke brown with a little bit of raw sienna to put the lightest colour. The, the trunk is going to go much darker ultimately on most of it with some of that warm colour coming through on the left hand side. Um, so I've started to do that on some areas. Some of the trunks are a bit warmer than others. These ones at the back, which I'm going to put in in a minute, are a little bit more of a grey tone. But what I need to do now for the ones in the background is they're broken by foliage. So I've gone in with a second layer of uh, yellow and also some yellow with a little bit of burnt sienna in it and put um, some bits of extra foliage in so that what I can now do is come up with the trunks breaking the lines as I go through. So I'm still sticking to my small brush and um, I'm going to try and put some of the trunks in at the back here. Now they're not going to be as dark as they need to be ultimately but we're beginning to establish um, the colour so I'm going to use a little bit of something like neutral with Van Dyke Brown and some water in it. Um, you may not have Van Dyke Brown, but any brown that you've got. Um, and I'm going to start bringing the trunks in at the back. So a good pointed brush. This is not the really small branches. This is just the uh, main trunks. So I'm pulling the color up. Some of the branches are going to be uninterrupted and I can just take them through and pull the color away. If you start to struggle with the size of the, uh, the branch, then just move down to a smaller brush. But for the moment, I'm okay with this size six. But when we come to a bit of foliage, where I want, I don't want to obliterate that, I'm just going to break the branch up, so come through with the colour. So it looks as though the foliage is running in front of it, that's the idea. a lot more detail later on but this is just to give me the structure until we get some of the branches in the main branches in the painting doesn't have much structure to it so I need to start getting a bit of the structure I keep going back to pick up more color I'm not trying to drag the color too far the pencil work is only there as a guide it's not uh, imperative who's going to know if the branches are in a different place back down to the bottom here and bring some of the other branches away. Hopefully these will start to get pushed into the background. What I have also done is put some slightly darker, I've used a little bit of blue in with my green to push some of the tones behind. So there's a couple of things that you have to do at the same time. You can't get all the trunks in um, immediately. You do need to work on the background and the uh, foliage at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is come up here. There's stretches where I can just get the color in uninterrupted. I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of warmer tone and run that in at the same time. So that's got a little bit of brown in it. So again, it's not just one flat colour. Break that up here and there through the foliage. So I need to do this really with all the trees. The main trees I've got uh, just one flat wash because they've got to go a lot darker so I can establish those. There's not much foliage interrupting them so I've been able to get those in place but with the others I do need to build it up gradually, um, 
try and pull your brushwork out from the trunks um, so they're not coming out at right angles. They sort of peel away kind of 45 degrees and it will look much more interesting if you can drop a number of colours in at the same time. It's not one flat, flat colour. But rake the lines up so that it looks like it's sort of winding its way in between other foliage. So that's the next stage and that'll take you a little while to achieve that. But do move down to a smaller brush, something like a four or even a two for the smaller branches. As you can see, um, I've now uh, finished putting some of the excess foliage in. I've used um, a, a grey with a little bit of brown in it to get a lot of the other trunks that I want to get in. I've certainly not put everything that's in the photograph in. I've picked out ones that I want and I've moved down to really fine brushes, um, the uh, probably a size two and also a rigger brush to get some very, very fine branches in place. Um, and I've done that on this left hand side. Uh, and I've also started to put some darker purples in towards the back, parts of the woodland that are shadowy, therefore the mauves um, of the bluebells are slightly deeper. So I've begun to do that. I still haven't gone in with the darkest browns, that'll be the next stage. But what I'm going to do is show you um, how I've done this section on the right hand side. The first thing that I'm going to tackle is adding some more um, foliage. So I've got these slightly sort of more golden bits of foliage. So I'm going to put those in first, just little um, splashes of colour. And again, probably more than I actually want to come through, knowing that some of it's going to uh, disappear as I build things up. Um, so this is just a little bit more prominent. Now um, you could use Oriolin is a lovely clean yellow for this, but any of the yellows that you've got in your box. Uh, so I'm doing some little touches of Oriolin, keeping it quite loose, not really fine detail, but just a slightly thicker mix than the colours that I've gone before. And I've also got a bit of Gamboge with some burnt sienna in it for some slightly warmer yellows. And these are just going to come in first. Uh, I'm using my size 7 brush to put those in. Um, I think actually what I'll also do is move up to a larger brush and where there's some slightly warmer greens down here I'll put some of that yellow in first with a bigger brush before I start introducing a bit more green so that big brush can bring some stronger green in at this point. So this is all before I bring any of the trunks over. So this will have to dry before the trunks get brought in on top. But some of that greenery that comes across the tree. So this is all still wet in wet. And then towards the bottom, I can move down to a smaller brush and I can also introduce some of my darker greens. Let it bleed in. to the brush to just give the impression of the ends of the foliage and again this is a slightly thicker mix it will still be fairly pale by the time it's it's dry but it can come up across the other colours I've tried to use as many transparent watercolours as I can um, so I've avoided cadmiums but you may only have cadmium yellows in your box so um, you may have to use those. I'm just bringing some of these deeper greens across because this is a slightly shadier section of forest on the right hand side. I'll go back up to the top and bring a bit more of my golden yellows in on the foliage and once I've finished this this bit then I need to let that dry and I'm going to apply the trunks of the trees using my pale greys and break the lines up just as I've done on the left hand side. So I now need to stop and let this dry. 
what I'm going to begin to do now is come down with my sort of brown and grey mix again with my size uh, 6 or 7 brush and break between the uh, bits of foliage it doesn't have to be really precise but where I've got bits of uh, colour I'm going to bring my trunk keeps stopping to load my colour and bring the branches and trunk through so in this instance I thought it was easier to work from the top of the tree and come down normally I would go from the bottom upwards but um, I thought it was actually easier to do it the other way around and as the branches go away from the main trunk just pick up a bit more water so that you're making the uh, branch pale away gives a better sense of distance and space to it further away you want the trees to appear, the paler that you're going to work. So this is a reasonably strong mix on this particular tree, but some of the other trees that I've done on the left hand side of the painting, I um, used a bit more of the grey tone and um, watered it down a bit more because I wanted to push it away into the distance. So just come down the trunk. I'm going to keep a little bit of light on the the left of the trunk and just bring the shadows through from the right hand side. small brush and if I want to I can take some little bits of, of shape in between some of the foliage and I can also pull out some fine branches so pulling them away and to be honest I'm just putting branches in that I like the shapes uh, not because that's how they appear in the photo of. add as many as you want onto this. I've got parts of the trunk coming away on this side so I can begin to take branches over over here. And where it's disappearing away, if I water the colour down a bit, I can make it go paler into the distance. And the stronger as it comes towards me. So you can put as much detail as you want into the trees, but that's the way that I've been building them up. Um, the fine branches, I can use a rigger brush, and where I want some really pale, this is using the grey and pulling it away from me with the very tip of the rigger brush, having them disappear into the background so I can bring in really fine broken lines fine distance, distant branches. And try and make it look haphazard, but they do have to join up at some point, otherwise it can look a, a, a bit messy, so make them join into other branches at certain points. But really look at the angles that they are leaving out but the paler ones can go towards the back and give a bit of depth to the scene so I'm just going to finish off that right hand side. Now that I've significantly darkened the washes coming down the trunk so I've actually dropped in green that I've been using in the foliage and some uh, grey as well it's dried so I'm starting to get a bit of detail in the trunk I don't want to overdo the detail I don't want the tree to look stripy but I'm down to a small brush and using a mix of the grey, the green and a little bit of burnt sienna I'm just doing the odd bit of texture on the trunk um, just to finish that off and I don't want to go mad with it but um, it's a fairly strong mix of colour 
and then I'm using water to soften it in a little bit and I'm hoping that that will be enough to give that closest trunk a little bit of uh, texture. It's got to look like it's anchored into the ground so that's something else that you have to make sure but we will be putting shadows cast by the trees onto the uh, forest floor so um, that should help to make the trees look as though they're growing from the ground. When you're putting some texture on the trunks go thick and thin with your brush and make sure that you've got a nice bit of waviness to the line. I've got a it's a bit too bright there so I just need to tone that down. Run a little bit of water, almost like dirty water over it. And just make sure that I get some sections. I've also put some of the texture into, or started to put some of the texture into the dark part of the trunk on this side. And hopefully that will make the tree start to look like it's 3D, but I don't want it to look too stripy. If it begins to look stripy, get a bit of water on your brush and just soften the lines in with a bit of water. It's got to look irregular. just enough to give some texture. Thick and thin. Some quite small marks. Some more substantial. Okay, so leaving that section, I'm going to move on to uh, the uh, bluebells down here. I've started to deepen um, some of the bluebells, so I'm going to continue doing that using the mixes that we practiced right at the start. I've got a selection of blues and I've begun to go over the top using my size 6 brush and not just put a second layer over everything, but pick out certain bits, look at where the shadows are falling, making the blues deeper in those places. using the tip of the brush begin to get some stronger blues not just one drop in a couple so I'm using some cobalt blue and a little bit of permanent rose so I've got some slightly more pinky mauves into the shadows once I've finished doing that over this whole front section then we'll just be on the home stretch and that's getting some of the darker greens into the foliage parts on the floor. We're on to the final stretch now um, and this is just finishing off the uh, sort of greenery at the foreground uh, section. So I've got two um, greens mixed, same ones as I've been working with but less watery each time and I'm just using the tip of a size uh, what's a six or seven brush and then a much finer brush you could use a rigger as well and I just want to start putting some uh, deeper greens in being careful to avoid where my bluebells are so this is the mid green this isn't the darkest this is the mid green it's just to give it a little bit of texture and I can use my smaller brush to indicate a few impressions of grasses, break up the edges where I've got more sort of leaf shapes. I don't want any detail in this foreground area but just uh, enough to put some slightly deeper greens in and give the impression of a bit of grass work. And then there's a slightly darker mix that I've used with a little bit of sepia in and where I want some really deep greens. I can touch that in or I want the shadows to be a bit darker. I can touch that in in a few places and again use my small brush to break it up so it's not going in as a solid 
shape, but a spiky shape. Just give a bit more depth to the shadow. You can do that in a couple of places. And I'm hoping that when that's dry, that will really give the feeling of shady spots and shadows being cast. Move over towards the right hand side of the painting and bringing in bits of those darker shadows here and there. softening the edges of them, the tip of the brush, swivel around a little bit. I'm only going to put the really dark greens in the, the very foreground areas. Um, if they go too far back in the painting, then it will uh, you'll lose any sense of, of the depth, but you can put as much in as you want. Um, and we're virtually at the end, I think I just want to push this green back a bit here. I think that's a little bit too too light behind the tree there. So I'm just going to mute that down a bit, push that into the shade. I think we're sort of virtually there. 